Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Let's go over the steps on how to create a new LUN, a logical unit number, on a Dell EMC Unity SAND. All right, so we're gonna assume that you've already configured the storage device on the network, that it's available on the network, that it's got an IP address, it's available uh, via a host name. So we're gonna open up a web browser and connect into the backend storage device itself via the IP address. So here we are in the storage area on our Unity. So right in here is where we can configure the storage pools, the blocks, the file, and some, some VMware configuration settings as well. Now, if we want to add a LUN into my SAN to be able to use that LUN and maybe assign it as a data store in a VMware environment, I need to, of course, have a pool first. I need to have a pool that has sufficient space to be able to add a LUN into. Uh, that's the very first and foremost. You can't create a LUN if you don't have space on a pool. A LUN can't be created on its own. It has to sit within a pool. So you'll see here that I've got a pool underscore 01 with a free space of 1.9 terabytes, which means that when I go and create a LUN, I can't create a LUN that is gonna be larger than my free capacity on my pool. If I do have additional disks, uh, I could potentially create another pool. I could expand my existing pool if I need more LUNs that are you know, a significant size larger than maybe what I've got available. So as long as you've got a pool here, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and go into the block section. Now, um, I do have other videos discussing the differences between block and file, which would be SAN and NAS. Uh, we're just gonna go and create a LUN, which is block-based uh, on my SAN, which is going to be going inside a storage pool. Okay, so under my LUN section here, you'll see that I've already got two data stores created. Both data stores are associated and sitting within pool 01. They are two, terab uh, two terabytes each, and we're just gonna create a brand new one. So I'm gonna click on this little plus symbol right here, and it's gonna launch the wizard. So you'll see that my LUNs have been given two names, data store dash one and data store dash two, so you can follow that same convention or create a brand new naming convention. The nice thing about these SANs as well is you can create multiple LUNs right here. If I really want to, I could create four LUNs in here, and I could say four, with a name of data store, that's it. Now what's gonna happen, it is automatically detected that data store dash one, data store dash two exists. So four lines are gonna be created with data store dash three, the next one will be dash four, dash five, dash six. It's automatically going to do that, so I don't have to go and create four lines manually and individually. In our scenario, let's just go and create one data store. We're gonna call it data store test. All right, we can give it a description. And now what pool do you want it to sit in? Now, in our case, we've only got one pool, so it's only, go it's only going to let me put it into one particular pool. If you wanted to go into a different pool, you go and create a different pool first and then add that LUN. So there's a little note here that's been displayed for me that's saying that this particular pool does not contain any flash disks. Uh, it is just a, uh, a pool that is made up of SAS disks that are all the same speed. Uh, it does not contain any flash disks, so there's not gonna be any tiering. You see down here I've got tier policies. High, then auto tier, auto tier, highest available, lowest available. In my case, um, all my disks are the same speed. Okay, so there's not going to be a high and then auto tier. Essentially what this means is the data will flow between different tiered or different speed of disks if you have a pool made up of multiple disks. So if I had pool 01 made up of some flash disks and some normal SAS disks and I create a high then auto tier, um, if there is a requirement for my data to be able to be performing faster, perhaps there's a particular read-write activity that requires more um, bandwidth from a disk perspective, it'll do that or move that into the flash disk first and then auto-tier it back down to my SAS disk. So in my case, it's not going to make any difference because I've only got one speed of disks. How big do I want my LUN to be? 100 gig? I can say terabytes, etc. So let's just leave it as the default 100 gig. 
Do you want it to be thin provisioned or thick provisioned? Thin meaning I can just expand it, it'll expand automatically. Thick is going to be static assigned. So um, if it's thin provision, 100 gig will only use the amount that is physically on there, expandable up to 100 gig. If I untick that, it'll become thick provisioned and it will assign the full 100 gig up front. Let's leave it as thin. Host IO limit, we're gonna say no limit for this. Then we've got an area here for the access. Now, it's nice that you can create a LUN and assign it to a pool, but you need some sort of host or some sort of server to be able to see that LUN. So unless that LUN is provided access to a particular host, it will not be seen by anything. So we're assuming that, you know, as I said before, that you've got um, the right access already configured, that your SAN can see some sort of some sort of server, some sort of host, such as an ESXi VMware host. So we can just say plus and add those hosts directly into here. If they're detected like they are here, you see that I've got three that are listed. Uh, you just tick on the ones that you want that LUN to be presented to and say OK. If you want the LUN to be shown or visible to any of those hosts, any of those servers, you tick all of them. You'll see that they are now all listed. You'll see that the operating system is VMware. The protocol is iSCSI file, etc. Uh, and then the host LAN ID, if I want to change it, I can customize the host LAN ID, or I can just let the SAN itself decide what LAN ID to assign it. Do I want to enable snapshot scheduling? So this is automatically snapshot, uh, a snapshot can be automatically created. Um, a snapshot is essentially just a, a point in time backup of, uh, of that particular LAN. Uh, I'll leave that off for now. Does it need to be replicated anywhere? So does it want to be moved from one to another, migrated, replicated from one um, storage pool, from one SAN to another, and then the different replication modes. If I tick on this, whether you want it to be asynchronous or manual, uh, how long does the RPO need to be, etc. Uh, in our case, we're gonna leave that blank. We're not gonna go into details about how to set up replication mode. A summary of what's going on, this is what's going to happen, and then click on finish. So there you have it, that is my overview. I hope you found this helpful. There's definitely a lot of stuff that uh, you can go into on the storage device. If you want to know more, let me know. We've also got a whole bunch of other videos that talk about SAN and NASAs um, of various types and the different technologies associated with those, as well as a whole bunch of other technology videos across my Digital Bike Computing YouTube channel. Either way, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and follow me as well to keep updated on my new videos as they get released. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.